Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Anurag, the Life Doc, your host, and you have tuned into Project IMG Podcast, the voice of international medical graduates. Uh, Project IMG is your one-stop solution for a guide to getting into the United States health system. We have courses, videos, video lectures. You can find job opportunities, clinical rotations. You can interact with other doctors. You can even have your own blog. You know, whatever you want, you name it. And the best part of it, you ask me, well, it's all free. It's completely free. Yes, you heard that right. This is a free platform that has been created by a community of international medical graduates in order to help out other international medical graduates. And with that sentiment, this is the first ever episode of the Project IMG podcast, The Voice of IMGs. Uh, through this podcast, we intend to bring you stories of international medical graduates, uh, you know, stories of success, so some stories of sheer perseverance, some stories of failure before success, and many more. Man, it's going to be amazing. So kicking off things with a bang, today I have a guest who is an international medical graduate from Argentina. He matched into OBGYN in the United States in the year 2019, and since then he has set out on a mission to help other IMGs such as himself in this journey of becoming a doctor in the U.S. Project IMG is actually his brainchild. And today, you know, we'll talk about a bit about his story and what Project IMG is all about. From Argentina to working as an OBGYN in New York City, it's going to be his story. The OBGYN extraordinaire himself, Dr. Sebastian Aruarana. Welcome. <laughs> hey, my friend. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Narag. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, Dr. Sebastian. What about you? I'm really doing really well, and I'm really happy to be here by <laughs> nice host by you. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's an honor to have you here as well because, you know, um, helping out other international medical graduates is amazing. So um, we will get into Project IMG throughout this video, right? So before we start, I would like to start off with, you know, uh, a little bit about your medical school uh, in Argentina mm -hmm. and how did you and when did you start your USMLE journey? Sure. So. I went to medical school, as you guys know, in Argentina. Um, well, in medical school, I was living with my grandmother. I went, I had, I faced a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Or like, some point, even we have like a home to leave. We have to live, you know, like in a small host, uh, like hotel with, with uh, like six, seven months with my grandmother, like with a shared bathroom. Um, I was working a lot uh, as a professor and different uh, things during my my career, just you know to just to make it through medical school. And then once I finished medical school, I always wanted to pursue the medical boards, but uh, first I didn't have the, you know, the economical support, the money to do it, the connections in Argentina. is very, very weird for people to, to pursue the American dream because they, they use MLA. Because first we study in Spanish, so it's a whole different language. Um, and also most of Argentinians, we have a double, uh, dual passport from, from Europe. So it's way easier maybe to go to Spain, you know, for, due to, uh, or even Brazil, uh, for proximity or for language, uh, things, uh, to Spain is easier. So, but my dream was, you know, to, to come to the USA, to pursue my, my medical residency here, to match into OBGYN. So I started uh, going into Facebook, WhatsApp groups, uh, trying to make connections in, uh, I created the first uh, WhatsApp group for Argentinians trying to match into into uh, America. I, I we created the Facebook group also. That now we're like a big big community. And in fact, those that started like at that time was started uh, like around like seven doctors match on my same year. And now it's like more and more every every year from from Argentina. And what, so once I finished medical school, I. I knew I had to get money. So it's like, okay, I need to get this big amount of money, which is this lot of money, you know? Um, so I started working as a paramedic uh, in the ambulance. In Argen Actually, it's, in Argentina, we, it's an actual doctor. In Argentina, we don't have paramedics. So it's a doctor doing the paramedic job. So I was doing that for over one year. And, and then I was offered a position to be the chief of the emergency department there. And then I got the position to be the chief of a second emergency department. So I was handling two emergency departments. Of course, it, it wasn't like a big uh, emergency, but like I had to take care of, you know, uh, the doctors complete, uh, make sure, you know, every shift has its own doctor. 
And also I was taking my own calls. Uh, sometimes I would do even up to 72 hours straight in the hospital. Whenever I wasn't seeing a patient, I would like sleeping and, and just to recover. And then I would do ambulance for like 17 hours, continue working. Uh, so I was doing that for over one year, which it was, it was a lot, but it was just to pursue my dream. And then when I knew that like I had like kind of enough money and I like, and I could make it here. Uh, I got a position to start working in California. First, it was a volunteer position. I it wasn't. I wasn't getting paid. Um, and then I. And then it was a paid position uh, in plastics and reconstructive surgery in transgender surgery. So I was working in female to male. Um, and that's when I always knew, like, I wanted to do with UIM, but then. I realized that with UINs also could do these kind of procedures. So I was like, oh, I'm really interested into, into the general, you know, uh, uh, of UIN, but also this, this thing that is even more specific. So I started working with them and, I'll, and, and then and the, at that time I was taking the exams, you know, the step one, the step two, I was doing research. And then I was ready, when I was ready to apply and apply, uh, I'm much in New York. That's uh, basically it. The story and during that time like i had to also i, fa- I faced a lot of you know family issues i i had to help my mom my grandma for for different things um even i had to live in mexico for for a few months uh, because i had also a place to live uh, so yeah there was a lot of my, my point is you know uh, the journey stuff is very complicated but as soon as you know you have discipline and you keep going you keep going uh, no matter uh, i always when I didn't have a place to, you know, to sleep or to, to live, I would always think, you know, all you need is, you know, one bed uh, and one computer, you know, uh, to one Wi-Fi, you know, some access to internet. And those actually all you need to, to study for these exams and, and to, to be successful, you know, a, a place to sleep, you know, and a place to study. And that's all. Wow, that's amazing. So coming from your story, right? So what I understand is that, um, straight out of medical school, what happens is that uh, in case of uh, like Argentinian doctors, right? So uh, they can work, I mean, they can work as a, like kind of like a paramedic, but that, that's a doctor that works within the ambulance, from the ambulance, right? You can work as a general practitioner. Oh, that's yeah. why, yeah. <clears throat> like in most of the countries, I think, like I know here you can, you gotta go through residency. I think most of the countries, once you finish medicine, they at least in Argentina, they make you, you know, you go to school to be a doctor, you know, to, to be a general doctor, uh, to be able to finish school and be able to see patients. Here, I think the uh, medical school is to be a resident. They train you to be a resident and, and you continue having your, you know, how to work under someone's license for three, four, five years, depends on how long your, your residence is, right? But in Argentina, as soon as you finish, you can have your license number and start working. Yes, I mean uh, it's this. Uh, it's a similar scenario in a lot of Southeast Asian countries as well, and even in Nepal, we can work as general practitioners. But you know, like working through an ambulance is unheard of because uh, we don't have paramedics as such. But you know, imagining myself getting inside an ambulance and going to patients. It was it was ambulance. very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like when you're gonna get a call and you go and like you could see anything. You know, any kind of you know car crashes, train uh, train uh, crashes, and uh, it was very interesting. Like, Sometimes I was on the news a few times for for different things that you know that happened that would, they made it to the news because there were such a, you know big fires or big uh, or buildings that would you know fall down. And, unless I was a doctor, I was there, so yeah, it was very interesting. And you get to learn a lot, and you get to learn there on the on the field uh, a lot. Wow. So you know you have a website called drsebas.com, right? So even I have been to the website a lot of times, and I see that you have documented your journey from that to becoming an OBGYN doctor, right? So what I see and uh, what I've observed is that you know you like to help others out, right? And in that pursuit, you now have come up with this project, right? Project IMG. So mm-hmm. why, you know, like uh, did you feel? Uh, in that way, right? I mean, um, in your website, you mentioned that, you know, if you do something good, make sure that you help out others and that thing is like spread, right? So why why do you have this sentiment in your roots? I mean, why this, you know, like uh, urge to help others and, you know, help IMGs all in all? So where does that drive come from, Dr. Sebastian? So I was, you know, when I grew up, I was, I lived in a, you know, a small community with my, I was living with my mom, with my, 
grandma, my grandfather, with my uncle, with my aunts. We all were in, you know, in the two bedroom apartment in, in Argentina. And I always, you know, was born with this uh, sense of, you know, community, family. Uh, and if you needed something, you know, you will get the, the help of, of fathers, also my, my grandma, my mom, you know, they gave me a lot of those uh, values. Um, and then when I was going through my medical journey, like, as I mentioned, I struggled a lot. I didn't have, I didn't know, like anyone that that, that went through this process. Um, also the, the, the economic part, you know, the, the monetary part was very tough. I wanted to take these courses. Uh, I don't want to mention the names, but you all know, you know, maybe it's like $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 subscriptions or even more. Some people told me they come to New York to do like in-person courses and they pay like $12,000 $12, for, for, for this, which is insane. I mean, those that can do it, it's perfect. And if you can pay for that and you have the money, like uh, that's amazing. But there's a lot of us that, that don't. And I, I don't think, you know, for not having the money, uh, that should be, you know, a way of getting you out of the, of the process. I think like everyone should have the opportunity. Then if for some reason you don't make it because it might be too much for you studying or you, can, you don't have the discipline to do it. Okay. That's different. You know, but like, uh, I think that the resources should be out there. And then if you make it or not, it's different. In Argentina, we have free medical, uh, health and free medical education. If you actually want to go to university for free, you can, you got to take like one year, uh, courses, exams, and then you can make it to free. You can become a doctor uh, essentially for free there. So, um, I think that's very important. You know, uh, I really believe in, in free education and helping others. Uh, the idea of Project DMG is exactly that, you know, having a community base of, of people and uh, international doctors and American doctors that want to help students and, and create. And I thought like, sounds like a lot, but like, if, I think it's, if, if everyone puts their little, you know, grain of, you know, salt into the thing, uh, it's not that easy. It's very tough to organize it because it's that's a lot of work by creating the things. If you know, since we have so many people, if we and we have like you know leaders, managers, and we keep everything on track, uh, it's not that hard to make uh, what I want. You know, we we started with the, doing this uh, recently a few months ago, and we already have like over seventy videos uploaded in like on, like only like two months. We created the the question banks, we created the flashcards, we created you know the courses. We already have almost done the research course and bio stuff course. Uh, and all of a sudden one like two, three months of work and we like and we're like not even a company. Like just from uh, the money that I'm putting, the money that Joshua, which is also the co-founder, is is helping uh, you know designing the the the, the platform, um, some donations that we got, and that's mainly, you know, <laughs> and we just, uh, not that much money, uh, to like, I mean, of course it's a lot of money, but nothing compared to like what, uh, you will think, uh, to that helps so many people. Um, uh, and just with that, we like making a big change, you know, like why, why don't you just do it? You know? That's amazing. And all of this is actually free, right? Because you mentioned that there are a lot of uh, people outside in the world, you know, might not be able to afford this outlandishly priced courses. And um, we at Project IMG and your vision is actually to, you know, make all of these things accessible in a free way so that, you know, if someone is out there who does not have the resource, but actually has the time and effort and has the, or that tenacity to pursue it, it should be able to get it right. So that's the basic motor exactly. behind Project IMG. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also created a very like a USMLE book, which is kind of similar the like the main book that people already use, but um, you know using our own our own things. So you have also a, a book to study, the video lectures all free to study, uh, and yeah, uh, the. The idea is also to have rotations, you know, because that's very important. Uh, I've been working very hard, you know, to get those rotations. It's really tough to get free rotations, but we'll see what we can get. Uh, the goal is maybe if we can get some rotations, maybe they will be paid, you know, but for uh, but for the minimum amount of price that the, the doctors want, you know, because I see those patients that uh, you got to pay for rotations, but they charge you like so, so much money because they keep a lot. The idea is if, if we get something, the idea is everything will be for free, but if we get something that the, the only way to get it, for example, a rotation is pain, is okay, you will have to pay, but for the actual amount of money that it costs and not, you know, for all this extra money that I take it and making the profit from you.
Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a really great sentiment that you have in place. And yeah, you always talk to us about, you know, how education should be free and it should be accessible to everyone. So I really think that's an amazing sentiment, you know. Um, so, you know, helping out IMGs, helping out fellow colleagues, the sense of camaraderie, that was amazing. So uh, you actually, you know, uh, conducted an IMG event, right? In It was in August 1, 2021, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. on August 1st. Okay. And uh, so more than 400 IMGs came in and they had a meetup. And uh, that was also one of your visions regarding uh, getting them connected. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like your website, the project IMG, the IMG event. So everything is built around helping other people out. That's what I understand. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. So I always wanted to do something, you know, gathering people in person. Um, during that time, it was COVID times even before, uh, so it, that's very tough. And also, there was nothing like an IMG gathering like I, that I heard of before. It's like you know, I'm living in New York. Central Park is huge. They just had uh, they pull out the COVID restrictions, you know, recently at that time. So it was people uh, were able to have, to gather up, and I think you know it was very necessary. Also, as you know, COVID kept you so long in your places without seeing anybody. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the feel of seeing people, uh, you know, actually in person, touching people, that's, uh, that's very important, you know, in Argentina, like we're, we are very social and we like, we even kiss each other, like, uh, guys to guys, guys to like, uh, you know, woman on the street, you know, the, we kiss on the cheek of our friends all the time. You know, that's how the, our way of saying hi, you know, we hear a lot of hugs and that's, we're like very sentimental, very sentimental. I know a lot of different cultures. I know much like that. And like, <laughs> um, but the thing is, um, the idea is not about that. The idea is, you know, seeing people and being in contact with people. That's a, a whole different uh, experience. Um, and I think net networking, that's uh, an important, very, very important thing on this uh, USMLA process. So the idea of the IMG event is yeah, to network, see people, make connections. I also reach out to a lot of companies. Also a lot of companies reach out to me. Uh, regarding the sponsors, so I got a lot of sponsors, and we gave a lot of you know free away of uh, scrubs, uh, Q banks, and uh, even it wasn't just a, a meeting; it was like uh, also a big picnic in Central Park. And, and so the idea also was to share, you know, in exchange uh, culture, share different uh, foods from different places of the world. So people from like Turkey, India, Nepal, uh, Argentina, they came all over. Um, they shared, the, they brought their the, the dishes and it was like an international uh, exchange of food also and, and culture. Uh, and at that time also like I broadcast this event, like more than 400 people came in person and like more than 500 were watching it online. Um, and I thought that that, that was also uh, something really, really nice because uh, I wanted to, everyone, even if people that, that didn't have the opportunity to come, that they could, you know, be part of this. And those that came, we had people coming from uh, Maryland, San Francisco, like Miami, all different uh, states, uh, taking planes just to come for the event. Uh, we had people even from different countries, someone from Colombia, from Argentina, that they flew just for, for this. Um, and the event was organized in only like three to four weeks. I remember it was like uh, the 4th of July. And that was when I was coming up with the idea. And I, um, I made some, you know, posts on Instagram. I, I created a, a team of uh, volunteers. It was like around like 20 of us. And we started, you know, deciding how it was. We designed a flyer. Um, in like three weeks, everything was done. I was like, oh, no, was first, I'm going to do it. No matter if it rains or not. Like, <laughs> I was going to, I was to remember I would be checking the weather every day. Um, no, because at, at first it was saying it was going to rain. So I was like, oh, man, I was telling people, no matter if it rains, we're going there. Uh, bring your umbrella. Like, this is not being canceled by anything. Uh, and yeah, and that's how, that's how it went. And the idea of the... Also, like, unfortunately, something happened in my hospital. Like, three residents the, the past year, they took their lives from different reasons. Um, so, and also they were IMGs. Um, so that's, that was also one of the reasons I want to do this. So, you know, so residents uh, and, and students, they don't feel alone and we call be together as a community. And the idea of going forward for the IMG events is to do it at least once a year. But then I, I want to, I've been really busy now with the launching of, you know, Project IMG and my residency and my workload, which is a, a lot. 
but uh, the idea is to have this at least once a year in Central Park. So the next July 1st, for sure, we're going to have it again. And I was planning for one during the winter. I don't know if it's going to go or not. It's my basic schedule of different things. But someone, for example, recently from Houston reached out to me. Uh, people from Miami reached out to me, like, and they want to do it in, in their city. So the, the idea for this is to, to establish the ING event at least once in New York every summer and then in different cities uh, around the, the states and who knows, maybe like around the globe, also different countries to be able to do something uh, like this moving forward. Great. Um, so for all our listeners out there who are watching, right? So if someone wants to be a part of Project IMG, it's easy, right? <laughs> it's just a yeah. click away at the website. You just go in, you uh, you know, you sign up for the website, and then you are there. And you can talk to other people, and you can even get uh, you know the kind of mental health uh, help, and you can talk to other people. So basically, it's like a whole community of doctors and international medical graduates. They are sharing a common space for collaborative effort and reaching a common goal. So that could be like a summary of Project IMG, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like the, the idea is, you know, for people to become members of the platform, which is super easy, it's completely free. You just put your information, you know, name, uh, email, and, and that's it. And it's like a face. The idea was to make it like as a Facebook for, for IMGs, where you have your platform, your connections, you can make groups, you can interact with people in the platform. Uh, and also have access to all these, you know, video lectures, Q-Bands, flashcards, the podcast that now we are doing, we're going to talk about soon. The, so many things. The research courses, uh, and it's uh, we are also putting a, a place for question and answers. The the news part, the blog that we are making, because kind of the blog that I have on drsebas.com, we're putting something similar, you know, with that. And also, if you want to become your own blogger, there's a place that you can actually create an account and be and have your own space to create your, you know, your own blog post. Uh, yeah, that's mainly. And then if you want to be part of, you know, helping in Project IMG, one of the contributors also, like everyone is always welcome. Right now we have, I think, like, almost, I would say like almost 500 people. And uh, like a lot of them, it's not like the 500 are actually uh, working, but I think it's almost 500 people right now that, that we have, you know, creating content and, and, and things. Um, because first I started with the book, then the lectures, and they were also they were doing an OBGYN book and different and things kept growing. And I also have no ideas, no ideas to for for everyone to have their, their space and everyone that wants to collaborate and work, they, they will have it. We also give you know awards. Uh, we have our internal meetings. Yes, we have one, and we gave award for you know the teams that made uh, most of the videos lectures so far, and uh, collaborators are actual the leaders that have worked very hard on Project IMG. And the idea is also we're going to have our own committee to, to give those awards and, and all of that. Um, and also the thing about Project IMG is not just it's of course giving all of these free resources or to help people that want to learn. And also, I guess, ask uh, this question many times, you know, like, hey, Dr. Sebas, you know, hey, Sebastian, like, how can I do to, to boost my CV? How can I do, where can I get a volunteer position? Where can I get some research position? Uh, so, so, so creating Project IMG was the idea of, you know, helping others and also helping those that want to be part of this. Because people now can put in their CV that, you know, doing volunteer work, they're, doing, they, they're leaders, managers, they're, you know, helping making courses, they're doing like mentorship. Uh, so also we're going to have a section, you know, for free mentorship. We also want to create our own journal, like kind of the, the New England Journal of Medicine, but like our own uh, the idea is to make it, you know, to PubMed and uh, be able to for IMGs because it's very expensive to publish. We, we all know. So to make it a way that you can, you know, very affordable, uh, free or, or completely affordable, we, we will see uh, how we're going to do it. But it's going to be like our own own journal with like, a annual conference uh, and all of that. This is not completely Project IMG, it's like a separate branch of this, but uh, but we also the idea is to have our own journal with like you know monthly publications and and all of this. Um, so it's not just about like giving the things away, but also for people that making the the content to to boost their CV and and be part of a bigger community with a really good uh, in boosting their the resume. People like. I have a lot of, you know, program directors, uh, fellows, even Dr. Pinsky, the, 
the president and CEO of ECFMG, like, and I know him, I met him in person, and he's aware of what we're doing. And, he, and ECFMG uh, hardly support, you know, supports our uh, project and uh, a lot. So, so that's really good also. Yeah, that's amazing. So there you go. I mean, you heard it from the man himself, uh, Dr. Sebastian. So yeah, I mean, Project IMG is going to be one of the most sought after websites for IMGs in the near future to come because yeah, it's for the IMGs by the IMGs, right? And exactly. this podcast actually is going to be, uh, you know, the podcast where we will share stories of even international medical graduates who, you know, matched into certain specialty. We'll talk about different specialties. We'll talk about different stories, how they got into the programs. Maybe there are some, you know, uh, doctors who are managing a very good, uh, you know, like work-life balance and everything is there. So it's going to be a mix of these experiences so that, you can relate to that perspective. You know, whenever you're feeling down, you feel like, you know, I'm doing these question banks and I'm fed up of all of this. So you can just hop on in and listen to a podcast and feel, you know, like if someone could make it, you I can do it as well, right? About us, fashion. I mean, that's the whole sentiment behind all of, uh, you know, this podcast and uh, Project IMG as a whole. So, yeah, I mean, if you're really interested, you can hop on into our website. Uh, feel free to come in as a contributor as well. If there's a place now uh, we can accommodate you. Everyone is welcome. Uh, you know, we've got exactly. Of course. So, like the the podcast is like the the as we mentioned, you know, our slogan is the voice of IMGs. So, you know, any IMG that's going through a tough situation, you know, a story that I gotta tell. Uh, I had people when, unfortunately, what was happening in Afghanistan right now was happening, you know, in Russia, Ukraine. The the wars are like. Uh, that are going on, you know, and there is IMGs there, IMGs trying to study and, and IMGs that don't deserve, you know, uh, to be involved in this, uh, that their studies should be cut off due to other politicians are just taking over, you know, uh, and making those decisions. You know, I don't want to get into politics, but like the thing is uh, helping those people, you know, uh, help, there's IMGs are refugees, IMGs are like, that need support. I am, so our podcast is for them to have a voice and, and be her. And also those are already made it, those are those are in residency here, uh, people that like, you know, maybe they have published something very important so we can, so they can talk about that, they can give us a lecture. Um, and so it's going to be a, a broad podcast for IMGs to have the space, you know, to, to express themselves and also for 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 residents and for front director fellows uh, to give their experience and, and different tips of how to, to make it through through the USMLA journey. That's amazing, Dr. Sebastian. So thank you so much for being here as the first guest of the first episode of IMG Podcast, The Voice of IMGs. And you know, if you have a voice and you want to convey it, you can definitely shoot us an email, follow on on Instagram, um, you know, and just feel free to send a DM and just say, you know, yeah, uh, this is my story. I really want my voice to be there. If, you know, you want it to be out there, we are here to give you the platform and talk about it. So, yeah, I think with that said, um, this marks the end of the first episode of our um, The Voice of IMG, uh, Project IMG podcast, The Voice of IMGs. And yeah, so this is Dr. Anurag and Dr. Sebastian. Well, we will talk about uh, his journey into OBGYN and about uh, some electives, uh, rotations and visa and everything is lined up. So all you have to do is just, you know, wait patiently for another podcast to come out. And until then, this is Dr. Anurag, The Life Talk and Dr. Victor Sebastian, leaving with a promise to meet you yet again in another episode of another podcast of Project IMG Podcast, The Voice of IMGs. So until then, take care and stay positive. Thank you, my friend. Thank you all.